Hey fellas, I'm reading an article called Sex and the Pareto Principle. It's about the 80-20 rule. And it starts off reading, uh, it's generally accepted in the manosphere that 20% of the guys or men get 80% of the women. He writes, when I first heard this uh, stat, I thought it was so intuitively obvious that I wrote a post endorsing it. Since then, I've come across the idea repeatedly through the application of, of the 80-20 rule. Uh, sometimes it's stated that 20% of the men get 80% of the sex, which is actually a very different claim. Regular reader Holland espouses this view. I think the, the reader of this guy's uh, blog wrote, I think an accurate uh, definition of the 80-20 rule is in order. As far as I know, it means that 20% of all men get 80% of all, i.e. premarital and marital, heterosexual intercourse. For example, if a man has sex with a hot young wife, his hot young wife, rather, words, three times every day, he belongs to that 20%. Judging by all the stats, it seems to me that a min small minority of men, the alphas, are essentially passing around between themselves a somewhat equally small percent of all the women, the sluts. The big difference is the alphas are willing to have casual sex with women below their own market, their own sexual market value, but pretty girls aren't having sex with men below their own sexual market value. That is, in my opinion, the main cause of the imbalance. And that's where he's wrong. He assumes that alpha males get dogs. You gotta be careful when you read some of this shit out there, fellas. Alpha males do not get the dogs. Okay? Uh, basically, alpha males get the alpha women. Alpha women are the ones that you guys slather over. That's whatever is current, the current trend for hotness. Back in the early parts of the uh, 1900s, uh, the women that were considered alpha females look way different. Much, much, much larger. Gordo. I felt the need to understand exactly, the actual author goes on, what the data says, if anything, in support of the Pareto principle, or Pareto, as it applies to the distribution of sex. Are we talking about 80% of all women, sexually active women, women in their 20s, when they're in their peak of fertility and beauty? Or as in Hollenhund's Hol version it is just a question of frequent sex even with one partner and I don't think it's frequent sex with one partner um, in business you know that if you run a business you know that 80% of your headaches do actually come from 20% of your clients get rid of those 20% clients you get rid of 80% of your headaches okay uh, in my business 20% of the people will try to steal from me. It's actually, I believe, it's larger than that in my business. They'll steal 80% of my profits, okay, by doing stuff like that. Um, give me those 20%, and boom. Also, unfortunately, I'm in the reverse of the 80-20 rule. 20% uh, of you guys are my market. The other 80% uh, of you guys are not my market. And that's the truth right there. I should be talking to 20% of you guys. The 20%. The origin of the claim, the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle, also known as the 80-20 Rule, that's why I've always called it the 80-20 Rule, states that for many events, roughly 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. Business management thinker Joseph M. Duran suggested the principle and named it after Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto, who observed in 1906 that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. They know that um, if you're on a sales force, 80% of the money is going to be made by 20% of the salespeople. If you're a car salesman and there's like 100 people, 100 car salesmen there, 20% of those car salesmen 
are going to make 80% of the money that goes to that door. That's the 80-20 rule. Let's take a, uh, a venue where there's players in the venue. And there's, um, let's say there's a hundred players in the room. They're all, no, let's fuck that. Let's just say there's a hundred men in the room and a uh, hundred women in the room. This is where it comes to a weird situation. 20% of those men cannot fuck in that, in that same period of time. The 80% of the women are there. Okay? So when you start working with dating, it, it gets kind of kind of strange. Convoluted. Number two, the fallout of the sexual revolution. I'm not going to go into the rest of this stuff there about sales and all this stuff and business. Uh, the anonymous essay, there is no longer someone for anyone. Hmm. Lays out succinctly why the 80-20 rule applies to the sexual marketplace. It is this explanation that I found so intuitively obvious when I first encountered it, excerpted from the essay. Sorry, here's an excerpt from the essay. The attractiveness hierarchy. In the monogamous marriage system of the past, the majority of men and women found mates and got married. In that system, singles knew roughly where they were ranked in overall attractiveness and married a mate of roughly equal rank as soon as they could, and usually in their early 20s. Remember I told you guys about levels? In today's society, birth control means that women can have sex without marriage, engaging in temporary physical relationships while they wait and hope for Mr. Right. Men have a greater evolved desire for unfettered sex and generally prefer more sex partners rather than a commitment to marriage and raising children. Because women, women are willing to have premarital marital sex, the attractive men who have already access to many new sex partners have little incentive to pursue marriage at all. They generally re prefer to circulate among women rather than settle down. And one example of that would be uh, George Clooney. Okay. Although he does get a girlfriend, but he's not settling down. He gets hot. She gets hot girls. Circulating around the pool, the article goes on. The promiscuous system allows very attractive men to avoid commitment and be continually available for sex. Because these men have can have more sex, women have sexual access to more attractive men than they would have been able to attract as a marriage partner under the monogamous system. For most men, this means that most desirable men, I'm talking about desirable men, not you know, creepy, nerdy types, you know, I'm talking about the, uh, the good looking guys out there, desirable men. Kim, and I do apologize, unfortunately, that's the way women are. Uh, nerds don't really get desirable till you know, she's exhausted her, her alpha, beta uh, pool out there and nothing's biting, okay? The good thing is that nerds will make more money if they apply themselves. So that's a benefit for her that they're beginning to realize now. I told you guys as I ramble onto something else, but it's important. Uh, I told you guys about the, uh, I was talking to a nurse and went to have my lungs checked a few years ago, and these nurses were real smart. They know that if they go to the, uh, those like ballroom dance class places, the salsa dance, all that kind of stuff, that's where all the geeky doctors are going. And they know they can get a husband there. That's how smart women are. They, they figure this shit out. Us guys, we're stupid. We can't figure this shit out. That's why I'm in business. Okay, desirable men can monopolize many of the women, and that is true. That's true. The most I've had at one time were 13. It was too many for me to manage. I told you guys about my friend and I. We had, I grew up with this system I call, we called the program. That's our fun way of mentioning our whole dating program. And, you know, I, I collected my numbers, and I had little notes, stuff like that. And, you know, I had 13 of them on the list one time. By the way, uh, that particular friend, he's going to be pushing my show next week. Uh, he had an appointment with, um, what is that 
channel where they show all the music from the old days, MTV, yeah, M uh, exec at MTV, and um, that woman had another another appointment, so they kind of had to reschedule. No big deal. They're gonna he's gonna keep pushing until he finds an open door. By having many relationships. Oh, let me also say that. Um, I read a PDF file this weekend on how to become a YouTube star. They have they have companies that you partner with that will promote you. It's it's a big business. These guys who you've grabbed through the channels, uh, they have company. They work for companies, and the guy was talking about what they get. It's per clicks, uh, per thousand clicks, they get about from the company they'll get two dollars. That's why they got to have millions of views on their videos. But these guys are making a great living just on on um, doing shows. And that's what one of my goals is, to uh, create a channel where there's no uh, copyright infringements. Because I've had those. I've used music that's copyrighted. And i got to stop doing that. So you might not even see me go back to the Player Supreme show. You might see me go to another channel in the near future. By having many relationships, uh, many sex partners and even multiple wives in serious monogamous fashion uh, the most attractive men I'm glad they brought up wives because I've been there with the wives before can consume the prime pro reproductive years of multiple women do you know that about 15 percent of the kids out there uh, that men are ha that families have that um, that's not their biological father and the woman did not even tell the dude it could be uh, in the beginning, or it could be in the middle. She said that she's pregnant, and she's been fucking around. I just uh, did some research that I'll share with you guys also. The alarming rate of women cheating in relationships is, is freaky. It, men tend to cheat the most, so we thought. Now it's women, and women won't get caught because they're more psych psychologically sophisticated than we are. Okay, They know how to do the shit right. When some men consume more than their share of women, uh, there will necessarily be other men lower on the attractiveness hierarchy who will have no suitable women available for marriage at all. This, is also, this also means that all of the men who are not on the top of the hierarchy must lower their standards. And I've actually told you guys, you got to crawl before you can walk in this game. I'm sorry. I, I told you guys that also. I, mean, I, I tell you guys, you know, go for who's looking at you, and that's your standard. That, that's what level you're at, unfortunately. Then as you get better, you know, you know when you start improving yourself, you do get more attractive. If you're a five, you can rise up to a seven, okay? Just like women. If you find a woman who's a five, you can take her up to a seven, have her change, get a, a good haircut, have her, if she's a little bit overweight, have her lose some weight, buy new clothes. I've witnessed this so many times in my own personal life that women, some women just blew up way past two jumps. Okay? And I just did a video. The kid's right, I do ramble, don't I? I did a video uh, of women. I'll let you guys see it. Um, women who have lost weight. Okay? They were these big fat pigs before, and then they're these little twigs afterwards. So if they can do it, you can do it. Also in that video, there's some males that have lost weight. It's my boy Kevin on Facebook. All right. Women who are accustomed to having sex with highly attractive men don't want to settle and marry the kind of less sexy man that would be willing to marry. Men don't want to be settled for either. This means that both men and women remain circulating in a dating pool for longer for long periods without settling into marriage as promiscuity or promiscuity increases marriage declines and fewer singles can find lifelong partners huh, I guess I better keep the girl I got uh, that pool out there yeah at my age that pool's real small out there okay with Jovina I, I, she's one of the hottest chicks in the club I'm grateful. I got mine, got out. Right, Jovina? 
Nothing. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Bind fate. Bind fate. Bind fate. You. That's what you get. Okay. It's a rather grim tale. The author actually continues, and one that I continue to find compelling. It works from an economic standpoint. What is not clear is how severe this, oh God, the situation is. Even a slight imbalance, say 45% of the men getting 55% of the women, would wreak havoc in the SMP. Explain great frustration on the part of many men. And what of the frustration of women? If the 80-20 rule holds up, then the vast majority of women can be assumed to be getting what they want short-term sexual liaisons when they're in their physical peak. I think there's some meat to this, this article after all, fellas. I'm going back to my 30s, and yeah. Yeah, these women, they were getting sex with the top cream of the crop over and over again. The thing is they would try to keep that guy around and I'm speaking from, sorry, I'm speaking from my own experience. Um, try to get the guy to stay for a while, and that might be what's something different that's going on today. I know that in New Zealand the guys are you know whining like bitches because women are now doing that whole sexual thing where they go out fuck a dude and get up and leave don't even, don't even take the number. They got what they wanted. They're stepping off. They're pissed off in New Zealand at the quality of sex and, and the quality of, of you know. What's going on down there? They're becoming more aggressive. So anyway, the article, I'll post the link to the article below this video uh, so you guys can check it out for yourself and learn something. All right, fellas? Peace.